As a .NET developer, I pretty much use Link on a daily basis. I pretty much implement it on every project I work on, and I personally think it's one of the most powerful capabilities within the .NET framework. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Microsoft are continually adding to what you can do with Link. In the last few versions of .NET, they've added some pretty cool new features. So what I'm gonna do in this video is look at some of the newer Link methods, including three brand new methods, which are coming out in .NET 9. So the great thing about Link is these videos can be super short. So give me five minutes, I guarantee you're gonna learn something new. And before we get to the good bits, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Okay, so in classic YouTube video format, out of the seven link methods I want to tell you about today, three of them are brand new in .NET 9. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you about two of the new ones now and one of the new ones at the end of the video to make sure you stick around. Now, the first method I want to talk about is a method called count by. Now, count by will be bundled in as part of .NET 9 C Sharp 13, whose ETA is to be released in November 2024. Now, just in case there's a few watchers out there that weren't aware of this fact, it is possible to install preview versions of .NET ahead of time. So if you're thinking, why well, am I showing you a method that isn't available yet? Then it's very simple just to update your Visual Studio, enable some settings of Visual Studio, download the .NET 9 SDK, and get going with count by today. Now, count by is going to give you a count on the number of reoccurrences in a list. So you can see here, I've got my product list, and in it, I've got laptop, smartphone, and you can see here, I've got headphones, and headphones is the only thing which is occurring twice in this list. Now, the code for count by doesn't really require you to be a coding genius. All you need to do is on your list, do count by, type in the property that you want to do your count by on. And then when we look at the code, you can see that I'm rendering out this list and we've got laptop and the occurrence number is the value, smartphone one, headphones. And because this appears twice in the list, we've got a value of two. The next new link feature we're going to look at again comes out in C Sharp 13 in .NET 9, and that is aggregate by. Aggregate by is going to do something very similar to count by. It's going to count the occurrences in a list. However, where count by only allows you to do a basic count, aggregate by is going to allow you to work with other properties within your objects to do something more advanced. So going back to my product list here, you can see that we've got all of our different products and we've got some prices on the side. Now, if I go to aggregate by, you can see that it's a little bit more complicated in terms of syntax. So we're gonna get our list. We're gonna put aggregate by. We're then going to define our product. We're gonna get a name. Now, the second thing we want to do is define the seed. So this is gonna be our zero base state. And you can see here that I'm setting it to a decimal because I'm using a decimal here. And this could be an int or it could be a double. So you could use it a double like this or an int like this. But let's say that I want to do this decimal. You can see here that I can then access the current total. I can then pass in my product. And I can do my current total plus my product price. And now if I jump back to my example, you can see that when it comes to my aggregates, I've got laptop. 999, smartphone 699, headphones 299. So remember, this is the one with two entries. And if we jump back to our list, we can see why headphones was 299 because we've got a 199 plus a 99 here. So both of these methods are pretty useful when you want to work with duplicates in a list. Use count by for a simple count, use aggregate by when you want to do something more advanced. Now, when it comes to dealing with that list, there'll be instances when you'll probably want to get the lowest priced product as well as the highest priced product. And to do this, we can use min buy and max buy. So this came out in .NET 6, released in C Sharp 10. You can see all we need to do is just do min buy, max buy, and then put in the value that we want to do the operation on. Now, if I go back to my website, if I look at the min buy, you can see it's got mouse. If I look at the max buy, we've got laptop. And if we look at my list again, we can see that, yep, laptop, most expensive, mouse, least expensive. 
The next method that I want to talk about kind of does the opposite of count by and aggregate by. So as we've just seen, if we want to identify if there's duplicates in a list, we can use either of those methods. However, what happens if we wanted to render out a list without those duplicates? So in this example, you can see we've got headphones here. However, if we look down the bottom, the second entry has been filtered out. Now, this is where distinct by comes into play. And the syntax here, is super simple. We're going to grab our list. We're going to call it distinct by. We're going to pass in the item that we want to filter on. Jobs a good enough. Except by is another method that you need to know about. And it works in a very similar fashion as distinct by because it's all about filtering duplicates out of a list. Now, the difference here is that distinct by will allow you to filter out items contained in the same list, except by will allow you to filter out items that you define in a separate list. So in except by here, you can see that I've defined a brand new list and in it, I've got a laptop. So using except by the syntax is a little bit more confusing, but not really that bad. So we do on our original list product, except by we're then getting our new product and we're saying select we're selecting the name and then we're going to do a comparison and we're going to select the name property here and when we do this if i go back to my list if i look at except by you can see that in here i don't have laptop at the top and i've got everything else the last new link feature that i want to tell you about is index yep index is brand new to dot net 9 c sharp 13 so released in 2024 now many people might be going big deal getting an index in a list i've been able to do that for ages however there's now an easier syntax so let's think about it in the olden days we used to be able to get an index doing something like this so we've got our list we can use index of we can pass in the item and then we'll get the index position so this is pretty long-winded now in the new world we get a brand new extension so what we can do is our list index this is then going to return us an index and the item itself so then we can access the item and the index in this example i've added it into a new list and then when we look at the page online nothing too ground above raking here we now have easy access to each item's position within the array. So that concludes this list. And let me know in the comments section below, what are your thoughts on these brand new .NET 9 methods? Now, before we part ways, do not forget to click on subscribe and like. It takes me ages to record these videos and something which takes you two seconds really does mean the world to me. Now, my final parting thing is that if you don't know how to turn on a preview version of .NET, then on the screen right now, I've linked to a video that walks you through how to turn on a preview version of .NET 8. Now, this process is the same for any single version of .NET. So look at that so you can get started with count by an aggregate by an index today. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Until next time, happy coding.